the next part of this mill restoration is to take care of the head, the front and rear gear assemblies as well as the quill assembly. After taking off this top cover, the first thing I'm doing here is removing a snap ring that captures the variable disc adjustment pulley onto this shaft. With the snap ring removed, this pulley just slides right off of this sh shaft, which is the spindle pulley hub. There are three studs that run from the top of the gear housing down to the quill housing that hold the top and bottom gear assemblies to the quill. I'm going to remove both of these at the same time which I'll find out later, I probably should have just left it on the quill. It would have made some of the disassembly a little bit easier. This thing really isn't that heavy, but there are some burrs on the end of the spindle. It's making this more of a challenge. Now I want to split the top and bottom gear housings, and I can do that by removing these socket head cap screws. Now the only thing that's holding these together is the friction with this timing belt that's going around this large timing belt pulley and then attaches to the main spindle pulley. This belt is getting replaced. Finding remnants of damage. Here's a broken spring from the brake mechanism as well as some pieces of a bushing. I'm gonna put the bottom housing away for now and concentrate on this top one to finish taking this apart. A couple of socket head cap screws that hold that pulley in place. Um, and they're attached to part of the brake mechanism. This is still a pretty tight fit, so it takes a little bit of persuasion with a rubber mallet to get it out the rest of the way. What's left in here are the pieces for the spindle brake mechanism. These brake shoes actually look like they're in really good shape. I'm going to after they're cleaned up, go ahead and reuse them. It removes some of the grime that's uh, hiding this socket head cap screw that holds this sleeve in to this housing. discovered that there is a another set screw 
on the other side of the shaft. And there's a snap ring that's on the end of this shaft that captures the cam onto the end. In hindsight, I probably could have slid this shaft out toward the inside of the housing rather than the way that I did it, which was to pull it through, necessitating the removal of the snap ring. Had I gone the other direction, um, I could have left the snap ring in place. Well, even with my smallest set of snap ring pliers, I couldn't get a decent purchase on it, so I resorted to using these two picks. I've done this before, and I've been pretty successful, expecting that I'd end up destroying the snap ring. What I didn't expect it to happen was for it to go flying across the room to be lost forever. I guess I'm going to replace it. And I think the last thing holding this cam on the end of the shaft is this roll pin. I always plan to disassemble this thing down to the smallest component that made sense. And ultimately it will be easier to clean the gunk out of this if it's, uh, if it's a part. So The speed change plate, this attaches to the top pulley on this side, which allows it to go up and down, which then gives you your adjustable speed, it is held on with a cotter pin. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this out so I can remove it. This got some rust on this plate, so it'll go in the evapo rust too. On the other end of that plate is a chain that then attaches to a pulley of sorts on the back of this variable speed mechanism. When you turn the handle on the side of this mechanism, it causes that chain to either wind or unwind, which then raises and lowers that front pulley and as that changes space it adjusts the speed of the spindle on this particular unit it was jammed up it was stuck it didn't move up or down so i am going to disassemble this completely to see where the problem lies on the back, there is this plastic bearing block that in the updated versions is now brass, and I will replace it with a brass one. And for less than $8, I might as well replace the dial while I'm at it. And the, the worm and the shaft are only held in with another roll pin.
And the last thing is this pin that keeps you from turning the dial too far in either direction. I can't quite figure out what's holding this thing together. If it's just that jammed up inside this plastic bearing block or if there's some pin that I'm just not seeing. I'm not too worried about breaking the plastic. I am trying to be as gentle as I can since I'm going to replace it with the brass one anyway. If I have to break it to get this open, I will. And as much as I would like to show you how I finally got this apart without breaking anything, uh, for the life of me, I don't know what happened to that footage. With the top half completely disassembled, I can move on to the lower half of this gear assembly by removing this uh, timing pulley. Yeah, this just was a tight fit, did not want to come out. The machine builders on YouTube that know what they're doing make this look really easy, uh, but I struggled with this one a bit. So it made more sense for me to go ahead and put it back on the quill housing so I could um, leverage the fact that it's bolted to the bench when uh, trying to get this pulley off. Barry at h and Machine makes this look so much easier. Maybe I just needed to go for it. There's a bearing cap over the bull gear pinion that I need to remove. Just held on with a couple of socket head cap screws. I can't quite get it off. I'm going to have to use some leverage to pull it off. In order to get to that, I need to remove this gear cover plate. And this exposes the bull gear and the pinion. This is what gives you your back gear for your high and low speeds. Next, I need to remove the shaft of the speed range selector. This is one of those things I have to get a replacement handle because it wasn't on the machine. Had I realized this when I was buying it and then knew that that handle is going to cost me $80. I might have negotiated a little harder. And then out comes the bull gear and the spline shaft. The bearings in here feel fine, so I won't replace those. And then there's this big washer and three compression springs that can come out next. The last thing to come out now is the bull gear pinion. Um, these bearings again felt fine. There was no crunching. They spun freely once I cleaned it all up. So I won't be replacing them at this point. Now I have a bunch of cleanup to do. A lot of grease got to come out. Uh, everything needs to be cleaned. 
before I can start putting it back together. Thanks for watching.